to startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hey guys, and this is Joe from startuprad.io. As an entrepreneur, cybersecurity should always be at the back of your mind. I am therefore very happy to introduce you to today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Isn't it a bit scary that your internet service provider can see everything you do on the internet? I therefore use ExpressVPN for some time now. They are rerouting 100% of the internet traffic through the secure and encrypted servers. They also help me protect my personal information when I'm using Wi-Fi, for example, in airport launches, on events, in co-working spaces, or while traveling in cafes. To get ExpressVPN, just click on the link in the description below and get the first three months free. Thank you for sponsoring ExpressVPN. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io reporting to you live from the EU Startup Summit here in sunny Barcelona. I would like to welcome Paulina. Can you introduce yourself briefly? Yes, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Paulina Yen, co-founding partner at Linux Impact Capital. And what better city to uh, be talking to you on today than Barcelona. Right. Can you, uh, you've been doing a presentation here on stage. That's why I got curious. Can you tell us a little bit what you've been talking about? Because Linux, right? Linux. Linux is an impact investor. So Correct. how do you evaluate startups? That, that was the piece that got me really curious. How do we evaluate startups? So one really important thing when we speak to startups is, of course, their valuation. But oftentimes what the startups say when they talk to us is we're worth five million. And then we ask, OK, but why? And then they say, well, we don't want to give up more than a certain percentage, let's say five percent. We say like, OK, but what's your value? What are your value drivers? What's your value? And they say five million. And this keeps on repeating. And my talk today at the EU Startup Summit was to explain how a founder should use fundraising as storytelling and how the numbers that you have, the financial model that you're sending out, it needs to reflect that storytelling. Um, that's basically in a nutshell, uh, but I can, I can go much deeper into detail. Yes, um, my understanding is you have a seven step approach for that. Correct, yes. So my seven step approach basically asks the founders to start with drafting their financial model. So th this doesn't have to be anything fancy or chic, but it can just be the revenue streams and the cost structure so that the founders actually have an overview of what's going on um, in, their, in their business. The second step is the value mind map. Ooh, sorry, the value mind map. And here the founders or anyone actually can just get a piece of paper, a big piece of paper and a pen and write down the name of their startup in the middle and then write down all of the value drivers that they have in their company. So that can, for example, be your team. And then from the team, you draw a, another point, which is your um, the skills that you have in your team or the connections or the network or whatsoever, whatever value driver you can think of that you have in your in your startup, that's what you can um, can write down here and what you need to visualize in order to go into fundraising. And then once you've done this, it's a little bit of an ego boost, but that's what you need in, uh, when you're starting a fundraising. And then afterwards, you need to write down your, so that's uh, the third step is the future milestones. And here I would like everyone to write down the one year, three year and five year future milestones. And why do we do that? Um, because founders, of course, need to dream to think about what would be the ideal world in one year, in three years and in five years. So here, the crucial thing is really to write down, for example, a list of the best potential customers or the best investors that they could get and visualize that um, in the future milestones. Next, we have a needs analysis. So this is kind of your shopping list for your, uh, for your goals, for the milestones that you have set. So 
this part is kind of like you have looked at a, a very fancy recipe, but now you need to know, okay, what are the ingredients and also um, how can I get them? So at the needs analysis, you're writing down what you need and who you need in order to realize those goals that you have set. So if you had set a really, um, a really uh, high goal, then try to see what would help you in giving and in making that goal become a reality. Next, we have the reality check, and this is not to see okay which of those can I can I actually um, um, do in the next year or three years or five years. But the reality check is, is crucial, and it's you asking for feedback and f asking the right people for the right kind of feedback. I have two main things here. The one thing is that you're asking not only your best friends and the the people that that are willing to, to help you, but really ask the people that might use the product, ask them for real constructive feedback. And then when it comes to pricing and your business model, don't ask them, would you buy my product? And would you buy or pay for my service? But will you buy my service? And will you buy from my product? And one example I'd like to give here is that if I ask my grandma whether she's going to, whether, whether I'm her favorite uh, grandchild, then she says, yeah, 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 sure. But if I ask her, grandma, will you tell my two brothers that I'm your favorite grandchild, then that's a whole different story. And that's the same with feedback. So you need to ask for constructive feedback to the right people. And then a little piece of advice, if you get unconstructive feedback, feedback that was meant to hurt you, then my advice is to think about it and take maybe the 1% of truth, the 1% that you can take away, the 1% that, that can actually be, um, be helpful and then just move on and let the rest go. And that's as far as the reality check goes. Now we're coming to the sixth step, which is the financial roadmap. And here we're coming back to our first financial draft and we're putting all of those value drivers actually into numbers. What we're doing here initially or essentially is looking at our numbers as a dynamic and interrelated system, just as your fundraising, just as your business. To give an example, if you are a marketing heavy B2C product, and you show the investors in your financial model that you're doubling every month in revenue, but then your marketing actually is stagnant and doesn't increase by much. Then we as investors, we will have some questions. So it is crucial that your numbers, they might be boring for some people, but it is crucial that they are part of the storytelling. And some investors say, ah, why do you ask for a three-year or five-year financial plan? It doesn't make sense. It is not the truth. You won't ever have exactly this revenue in three years, but it is an essential part of you understanding your business model and we as investors understanding your plan behind it. Through your numbers, we can check what are your goals, how, a, how high are you, ch um, are you aiming? So going back to the future milestones, what's your plan? So we can ask, how do you want to realize doubling in revenue every month? And then you can go back to your needs analysis and show how you want to do that with who and what. And that brings us to the last part, which is the key value drivers, because here you go back to the start, to your value mind map, and you see which of those value drivers directly leads into one of the future milestones and which of those future milestones is actually achievable through the needs analysis and which of those needs that you can achieve and you know how to achieve them which of those actually is going to um, turn the needle into the right direction in your financial model which of those has margins that will make your business model sustainable also from a financial point of view so when you have done all of this you have narrowed down your key value drivers from a from a, a mind map that is full of value drivers to your key the key parts of your business model and those that you can then sell and if you know what you want to achieve, when, how, with who, then you're selling more than your valuation, then you're selling your value and your worth. And that's why I invite everyone to sell your value and not your valuation. That sounds pretty promising and it's quite a step from um, the usual VC pitch, just get your financial models in order. Um, what are you as an investor specifically looking for? I remember you talked about having to or wanting to invest 50% in female founders. 
Correct, yeah. Our investment criteria, we invest in impact innovation. For us, impact means anything that is inherently impactful. So our startups, they need to be created to solve a environmental or social problem at the core. That's what impact means for us. And we, in our whole investment process, we follow quite the radical um, approach there, which, which is either it's a hell yes, or it's a no and um, and that's how we how we see impact as well that's of course only the screening and then we have developed together with experts uh, the Linux impact framework um, but that would uh, go f further than the question so our Im our investing criteria are impact innovation that is scalable um, early stage startups in Europe uh, we invest industry agnostic but always within, uh, impact and very important, um, especially for the uh, fund that we're planning to raise soon, 50% female founders and we're planning to raise from 50% female LPs. So that is a core. Um, the numbers show that investing in females is and investing in parity is profitable. And now we need to show that it is also possible. And we do this through the whole supply chain um, of the investing ecosystem where we have 50% female founders, but also 50% investors. And we're 50% at the partner level at our company with me being the, the female GP and my partner being a male GP. So we really invest in parity. It's um, all of us together against the problem and not us against each other. And that's why we invest in parity. That sounds pretty interesting. And down here in the show notes, we'll share your LinkedIn profile as well as a link where startups can learn more and can pitch as well as potential LPs can reach out to you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Totally my pleasure. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Adios. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www startuprad.io Remember, sharing is caring.